London, 1716. Two men named Dr. Becker and John Martin published a pamphlet which would change the world for more than 200 years. In it, they warned society about something which, according to them, can cause vomiting, nausea, breathing issues, coughing, hoarseness, paralysis, impotence, lack of libido, back pain, disorder of the eye and ear, total diminution of bodily powers, paleness, thinness, pimples on the face, decline of intellectual powers, loss of memory, attacks of rage, idiocy, epilepsy, madness, fever, and finally, suicide. And worst of all, we were all suffering from it. They called this horrific practice onanism, and nowadays we call it masturbation. The published paper was called Onania, or the heinous sin of self-pollution and all its frightful consequences, in both sexes considered with spiritual and physical advice to those who have already injured themselves by this abominable practice. The title is almost a book by itself, but in it Martin and Becker argue how masturbation can cause all these horrible side effects. And as luck would have it, not only did they discover that this was the case, they also discovered a cure for it. A simple strengthening tincture for 10 shillings or a prolific powder for 12 shillings. It was a hoax, obviously. If someone would try to sell you a potion nowadays to save you from the dangers of masturbation, you'd be like, get the fuck away from me, crackhead. But somehow, some way, people believed it. And Onania became an international bestseller. It was translated into multiple languages and had over 60 different editions. The reason there were so many different editions was because a lot of fans wrote to authors to thank them from curing them from this heinous sin often signing it your most humble servant as if they were in some non-masturbating cult. The authors would then publish these letters and the response to it in a new book and publish it as a new version. Like publishing a new version of the same product but then just packaging it with extra testimonials of satisfied customers. Honestly, the marketing for this was way ahead of its time. The actual author's words are only like a dozen pages long, but by edition 18 we are already talking about a 350 page pamphlet of pure propaganda. This could have been the end of it, just some mass hysteria that was forgotten in time. But, as fate would have it, one of the people who read Onania was the notable Swiss physician Samuel Auguste Tissot. He was already well known and respected for publishing a paper about nervous disorders. And wanting to repeat the success of his previous paper, he wrote his own version of Onania and called it Lonanisme. Or something like that, I don't know how to pronounce it to be honest. The ideas of the book Lonanisme are very similar to the book Onania. Tissot just added his own list of horrific side effects, but the essence was very much the same. One important thing was different though. This was no longer a random person trying to scam people for a quick buck. This was a well-respected physician proving the side effects of masturbation. And coincidentally, Europe was in the middle of the Age of Enlightenment. In a time where radical new ideas were all the hype, you could now suffer from masturbation. One of the main characters in the Age of Enlightenment is Immanuel Kant, and it's hard not to understate the importance of Kant's vision and philosophy on the world and how it impacted our lives. But Kant was also a bit messed up in the head when it comes to sexuality. So one of the most influential people of our modern history joined this crusade against masturbation. And he was far from the only famous person to take this side of the argument. One of Immanuel Kant's enlightenment buddies is called Voltaire. And he also read Lonanisme and he was like, yeah, yeah that makes sense. 
Mind you that Voltaire is the one who led the charge about free speech, freedom of religion and the separation of church and state. And now also the dangers of masturbating. Oh, uh, guys, guys, come on, man. Fuck. We're just, you know, it's just wagging your dick, bro. Jean-Jacques Rousseau called it mental rape. Mark Twain wrote, Of all the various kinds of sexual intercourse, this has the least to recommend to it. So, in concluding, I say, if you must gamble your sexuality away, don't play a lone hand too much. When you feel a revolutionary uprising in your system, get your Vendome column down in some other way. Don't jerk it down. Sigmund fucking Freud wrote about the disease of masturbation, in which he compares it to addictive substances like cocaine. But at least Freud was honest, because he admitted that he was suffering from masturbation. But maybe the craziest, most outspoken person against masturbation was Dr. John Harvey Kellogg. Yup, that one. Dr. Kellogg, the creator of the beloved child breakfast brand, was such an outspoken anti-masturbator that in order to prevent your child from masturbating, you should, and I'm, I'm quoting the man himself here, you should try bandaging or tying their hands, covering their genitals with patented cages, suing their foreskin, suing their foreskin shut, electrical shock therapy and circumcision without anesthesia bro what the fuck and how do you even know your child is masturbating well dr john harvey kellogg wrote a book in his book called plain facts for old and young he describes 39 symptoms by which you can spot a masturbator do you have lack of energy masturbator do you suffer from sleeplessness? Masturbating. Are you untrustworthy? Masturbator. Do you have round shoulders? Yo, you're masturbating. Do you smoke? You're masturbating. Do you bite your nails? Masturbator. Do you happen to eat clay or chalk? You're masturbating. Do you like salt, vinegar, pepper, or mustard? Masturbator, masturbator. Masturbator! <laughs> Masturbator! Try thinking about that the next time you eat your cereal. Another new idea at the time to stop people from touching themselves was to eat a bland, boring, meatless diet. Sound familiar? Kellogg? And do you know who else supported this bland, boring diet to prevent people from touching themselves? Sylvester Graham from Graham Crackers. Now what a goddamn coincidence that the two inventors of the most boring, bland breakfast out there supported the idea of eating their inventions to get rid of a vile disease. These guys just joined the anti-masturbation crusade to sell some product. Guys! We've been fucked, man. We could have been eating brownies for breakfast if it wasn't for these two fuck faces. Whew. <clears throat> I don't want to put all blame on them because everybody at the time was extremely misinformed. I mean, even medical literature at the time suggested things like straight jackets, removing the genitals completely, cauterization, which is basically welding a part of the body shut by burning it, or circumcising babies to prevent the desire from ever appearing at all and this is actually one of the reasons why the us and uk started mass circumcising babies it wasn't until a sexual revolution and a man named alfred kinsey that our outlook on onanism slowly started to change Alfred Kinsey had a more open mind towards sexuality than his peers. He is regarded as the first major figure in American sexology, and he published his research in something called the Kinsey Reports. 
these papers were similar to Kinsey's research methodology, a bit controversial, but they did dispute a lot of common knowledge from those days. He was the one who popularized the idea of homosexuality and heterosexuality not being a binary choice, but more a skill, and he called this the Kinsey skill. He is credited with liberating the female sexuality, which was at the time often disregarded completely, and he also proved that the vast majority of people were masturbating, and that it was natural, there was nothing weird about it, and you weren't gonna die. And with these reports, Kinsey paved the way for a more open mind towards sexuality as a whole. His papers are regarded sort of as the precursor to the sexual revolution of the 60s and the 70s. This revolution did a lot for the public's perception about sex and only in 1962 did masturbation stop becoming a diagnosable condition. It wasn't until 1972 that the American Medical Association declared masturbation to be normal. 1972. That's not even 50 years ago. But finally, finally, the world was able to touch themselves in private in peace. Whew, that was a lot. Two guys using a scare tactic to make a quick buck that leads to 250 years of mass hysteria surrounding self-sexuality. My editing and shit, it, it might not be top tier, but, but content wise, guys, this is the shit. I knew from my history books that we had a bad past with masturbation, but I didn't know it was this bad. My research was intense reading this. If anything, it just goes to show that just because someone's a respected individual on one field doesn't mean that all their ideas are profound. Looking at you, Kant, Freud, Twain, Kellogg. If you enjoyed, please leave a like. If you really enjoyed, please subscribe. And if you really, really enjoyed, please like, subscribe, comment, share, watch a new video, write me a letter, put up a shrine and create a fan page for me. All jokes, of course, but for real, if you got this far, I truly appreciate it. And please consider watching one of my next videos. It'd be... It'd be amazing. It'd be appreciated. It would be most pleasant. It would be... I'm out of inspiration. <laughs>